Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know a long time no see, but I've been doing some other stuff, so I didn't really have the time and or the motivation to make some YouTube videos. I do now, so we're back. We're in a little bit of a different environment because I moved in the meantime. I'm still playing around a little bit with the lighting and the audio, so if something is a little bit off, then you know that I'm just trying to get used to this room. It's very echoey, even though it's super small, so I might need to put something up on the wall, but that's not why you click this video. Today we're gonna to talk about the Apple Magic Mouse 2. So about a week ago, I switched from PC to Mac, and for me, this was the very first time getting a Mac, and if you know me, I really like Apple products, so I was really excited to get my hands on it and try everything out, but one of the most things I was very curious about was this little guy, the Apple Magic Mouse 2. Now, if you know this mouse and if you've ever seen it online, you know that there's a lot of controversy surrounding this mouse, especially because the charging port is placed on the bottom, so you can't really use it while you're charging it, but that's not what we're gonna talk about today. Today we're gonna to talk about the other half of the controversy, and that has to do with the ergonomics of the mouse, which are a little bit curious. So like I said, I recently switched to Mac for the very first time. So you can imagine when the Mac was shipping to my house, I was really, really excited. So I went online and I watched every single video there is about the new iMac, because that's the one I got. Uh, unboxing videos, everything. <sighs> Stupid light. So I went online and I checked out every video there was, every unboxing, discussion video, there were so many online content about it, and I was just really, really excited. But the one thing that kept coming back in those videos was whenever they were talking about the Apple Magic Mouse, they were all like, it takes some getting used to, but once you're used to it, it's really, really handy. And everyone was really excited about the mouse or hated it. And the common theme I saw was the people that loved it were the ones that kind of kept working with it or kind of were in an environment that they had to work with it and eventually get used to it. And it kind of scared me a little bit that everyone was saying that I had to get used to it because I think the mouse looks really cool and I love the fact that it has a touch area, but I'm used to the Logitech MX Master. And if you know this mouse, then you know that it's one of the best mouses, mice, there is out there. It has two scroll wheels, one for vertical, one for horizontal scrolling, or you can set it up to whatever you want it to be. I have my thumb scrolling wheel for the volume so I can easily lower and up my volume when I'm working. Uh, but you can do so many things with it. It has a forward and a backward button, it has extra button, and it's super ergonomic. Like you can work with this mouse for literally hours and you won't feel a thing in your hand. So naturally, I was very scared that the Apple Magic Mouse was not gonna live up to the standards of the Logitech MX Master. But on the other hand, the Logitech MX Master is quite chunky, it's pretty big, and it's just not as clean looking as the Magic Mouse. And like I said, that little touch area that the Magic Mouse has is just really, really cool. But besides looking cool, that touch area is also needed to use the gestures that macOS is filled with. If you've ever used macOS, you know that it's filled with gestures that you can use to easily switch between programs and do different things on the OS. And those are really, really handy, especially if you're coming from Windows and you're sort of used to using keyboard shortcuts, these gestures kind of replace that. So if you wanna be quick and snappy throughout macOS, these gestures are almost essential. And the MX Master doesn't support them. That was reason enough for me to at least give the Magic Mouse a shot and not just stick with my Logitech. And when I picked up the Magic Mouse for the first time, I found out that those videos made a pretty good point. It takes some getting used to. It feels a little odd scrolling on essentially an invisible scrolling wheel, and the clean, small looking design makes it feel like the mouse is way too small for my average sized hands. But like I said, I really wanted to get used to this mouse, so I challenged myself to keep using it. In fact, the video you're watching right now was edited entirely using the Magic Mouse. And at first this was really annoying because I was very tempted to just grab my Logitech, especially when I was video editing and I just needed a little bit more precise control. But I knew that if I would keep using the Magic Mouse, eventually I would get used to it and then it would be a really ultimate great mouse because then I could have both the gesture support and have a mouse that I like working with. So like I said, I was convinced if I used it long enough that I would start to like it, and I eventually did. But me getting to like it was not just because I got used to it. I find that very vague and it's kind of annoying, and that was something I was missing from all those other videos I watched, 
most people were just focusing on how you could get used to it. Just use it for a long time and then eventually you'll like it and then it's like a really cool mouse. But I wanted to make this video to give you some actual practical tips that you can do to make this mouse more usable. So after being using it for a long time, I tried to dissect why it is that I like it now and I didn't like it in the beginning. Some practical specific things I changed in the way I hold the mouse and some settings on the computer to make this mouse way more usable. So let's quickly talk about those settings first because there's just a couple that you need to change. So the first thing you want to change is the pointer speed, which by default is set to extremely slow. You're going to have to be swiping that mouse over your mouse map for a couple couple times before you get from one end of the screen to the other end of the screen, which is really annoying. Luckily, it's easy to fix. Just go into system preferences, click on mouse, and for me personally, I would drag it all the way to the right so that it's at the fastest it can be. The second thing you wanna do is turn on the right click because for some weird reason, this is turned off by default. In the same menu you are, you'll see a little box with secondary click. Just check that box and now if you use your middle finger to right click on the mouse, it will function like an actual right click to open up submenus. The options you've been changing so far were under point and click. You can now change the tap to more gestures to turn on two finger gestures. And there's two of them that I think you should really turn on. The first one being able to switch between full screen apps. This allows you to just use your two fingers to drag it along the touch area of the mouse to switch between full screen apps. This is extremely handy, especially if you're coming from Windows because for me personally on Windows, I was used to full screen apps, full screen programs to be able to still be moved. You could just grab it at the top and just drag it down. You could minimize them. But if you put something on full screen on Mac, it's kind of like having a full screen YouTube video. You can't really do too much with it. And if you want to go from a full screen app to the desktop really quickly, it's not just a matter of minimizing it because then you'd have to take it out of full screen mode and then minimize it, which is not something that is the case on Windows. So two finger gesture, just swipe left and you're back at your desktop or swipe right to go to the other app. And this is really, really handy, especially if you have a Mac with a smaller screen and you don't want to uh, waste screen real estate by using split screen. And you just want to have two full screen apps that you can switch between quickly. Two finger gesture, switching between full screen apps. The second one you want to turn on is mission control. This kind of goes into the same one as the two, switching between full screen apps. This time you just use your two fingers to tap on the surface and it's going to open up mission control, which shows all your full screen apps. This is really handy if you have a lot of apps open and you don't want to be swiping three, four times to get from one app to the other. You just use your two fingers to tap, mission control will open and you can click on the app that you need. The last thing you want to change is the scrolling speed and trust me this one is going to change how you use this mouse forever the scrolling speed on the magic mouse by default is really really slow and this was one of the most annoying things for me with the mouse because you'd have to swipe your finger over and over and over to get through a page and this is in big contrast with like the Logitech which is has a scrolling wheel that you can also um, kind of like put in like a free flow mode where you can just swing it once and it'll just keep rolling and it won't break or with the Magic Trackpad where you have this huge trackpad surface that you can just keep swiping on. And that makes the Magic Mouse very annoying. But this is quite easily fixed by just upping the scrolling speed. Now this setting is hidden a little bit deeper into settings, but it's still quite easy to find. This time when you click on System Preferences, we're not gonna click on Mouse, we're gonna click on Accessibility. Once you click on that, a long list of options will open on the left side. You're gonna scroll down a little bit until you see Pointer Control. Click on it and in there you'll find button mouse options and if you click on that you can increase your scrolling speed the third option counting from the right is the best one for me but you can just play around with it a little bit until you find the one that is right for you but this you'll see that this really really changes the way you use your mouse because it just really ups it and it makes it a little bit more snappy and it just makes it feel a lot less like a slow paced mouse Okay, so now with these settings changed, in my opinion, the mouse is way more usable than before. But there are still some practical things that you can do to make this mouse feel more ergonomic and feel more comfortable in your hands. So the first thing you wanna be doing is not resting your entire palm on the mouse. On a normal mouse, which is a lot bigger, like for example, the Logitech, we're very used to just using our whole palms to rest on the mouse. But if you look at the Magic Mouse, you'll see that there's no like, 
ergonomic design for you to rest your palm. So you don't want to be doing that. What you want to be doing is holding it from the sides. Now, if you hold it from the sides, you're going to have your pinky and your ring finger on the right side of the mouse and your thumb on the left side. And if you're left handed, this is going to be mirrored. Now, what you'll automatically do when you do this is this will keep your palm suspended above the mouse. And at first, this is going to feel very uncomfortable and it's going to be like, well, it just feels like you're holding a tiny mouse. You know, if you would have like a Logitech mouse, but then you would shrink it down five times, you would hold it like that. And it feels very uncomfortable at first. But the thing you can do to make it a little bit more comfortable is resting your wrist onto your desk. So instead of having your palm and your wrist resting on the desk, you're gonna raise your palm a little bit so you're holding it from the sides, but you're still going to be resting your wrist on the desk. Now this is gonna make the mouse feel a lot lighter and more comfortable to use. The second thing, and this almost automatically happens when you're holding it from the sides, is that you want to suspend your middle and index finger above the mouse. With a traditional mouse, you have a left and a right mouse button. So naturally our instinct is to have our index and middle fingers just resting on them so that when we click, we just have to do minimal effort to click. Like no one is actually like clicking like this. And this makes sense on a normal mouse because those buttons are not touch sensitive. But on the Magic Mouse, this is not the case. The place where the left and the right mouse button are, above it is a touch sensitive glass. So you don't want you to have your fingers always on there. Now, if you suspend your index and middle finger above the mouse, it becomes much more comfortable to be scrolling with your index finger and letting your middle finger join the party when you wanna do the two finger gestures like open up mission control or switch between full screen apps. Having your two fingers rest on the mouse and then trying to scroll or do a two finger gesture is kind of like already having one finger stationary on your iPad and then using the other finger to, for example, try to do a pinch to zoom in Apple Maps or whatever. It doesn't work, but when all your fingers are suspended from the touchscreen, so nothing is touching the touchscreen, and then once you want to do some input like a pinch to zoom or switching between apps or click a button, then you introduce your finger to the touch area. So on touch devices, we've already kind of learned how to do this, but since this is a mouse touch hybrid kind of thing, it feels a little unnatural in the beginning. But trust me, this is gonna make it feel way more comfortable. So in short, you wanna change the pointer speed and the scroll speed, turn on the right click, turn on the two finger gestures, and then hold the mouse from the side with your thumb on the left side, your ring finger and your pinky on the right side. Keep your index and middle finger suspended over the mouse and that way you can just easily freely move it, rest your wrist on the desk so it's a bit, little bit more relaxed and trust me, you can use this mouse for hours. Now don't get me wrong, things like the Logitech MX Master, in my opinion, are just better products because they work better out of the box. They're more intuitive, they're more ergonomic and in my opinion, a lot of Apple products feel very intuitive and this one really is the exception. So Apple, if you're watching this, the Magic Mouse 3, I think needs to be very, very different, much more intuitive to use, but trust me, Magic Mouse 2, once people get to know it, it's a really, really good mouse. So I really hope this video helped you out. I hope that you don't throw out your Magic Mouse or sell it on eBay or something and stick with it and really get used to it and hopefully it'll make your experience of macOS a lot easier. And nowadays also iPadOS. So yay, go Apple first party mouses. Just, you know, Apple, make them a little bit more intuitive or at least give us a manual like this video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.